are ever mindful of his goodness and his mercies. What a song to sing. How holy is our God. For surely he and he alone is holy. Amen. No matter how holy we think we are, or not, my, not as much as we would like to be, but only he is holy. Amen? Oh, amen. Thank all of you for being here this morning to Reverend George in his absence. Amen? And we want to continue to keep him in our prayers, and, and I was so grateful to See, he made it out to our leadership meeting. Amen. He was there. And amen. We just thank God for him being there and for all that he continues to do. Amen. amen. But God is moving in a mysterious way. And we just want to thank God for just being God. Amen. To my colleagues in ministry. I uh, pray God for them and their strength. And to our golden girls out at fine choir, amen. Well, they came in lighting it up this morning. Amen. And to our deacons, our ushers who stand at posts, and our musicians who continue to serve in a mighty way. We give God all the praise. Let's turn now to the Gospel of Luke. I call the Gospel of Luke our Negro Gospel. Amen. He, he was like the others. Amen. See, the difference in Luke is that he was a Gentile. Amen. He wasn't a Jew. Everybody else in the Bible were Jews. And he's the Negro gospel, the different one. Amen. And for that, we want to give him privilege this morning as we turn to the fourth chapter. And we're going to begin our reading at the 14th verse. Now we'll conclude at verse 21. Amen. Amen. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the regions round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your here. Amen. 
Father God, we just want to say thank you for just being so good, so kind, and so merciful. Thank you, Lord, for what you have allowed to take place. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do and what you will do. Strengthen us now. Come now, the Holy Spirit, and touch in a mighty way. Give us ears to hear and words that will prevail all things unto you. Come now, the Holy Spirit, and remove me from me and hide me behind the cross so that your people may hear your word despite of what I may say or do, for your word is more sufficient than I will ever be. Ask in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And all who believe said, Amen. subject for this morning, how to mend a broken heart. How to mend a broken heart. Jesus has just returned from the wilderness and the Mount of Temptation where he had struggled with Satan and faced temptation and had not bowed to compromise. The Bible says that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. His fame was spread abroad and he began to teach in the synagogues. On the occasion of our text this morning, we find Jesus in the synagogue quoting the famous passage from Isaiah the prophet that spoke of a great Messiah who would come and heal and deliver the people of God who were held captive by sin and the devil. Jesus, read this great text and sit down and said, this scripture is now literally fulfilled. His message was first of all to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Secondly, to heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free. Thirdly, to set the captives free and give sight to the blind. I want to focus on the second purpose of Jesus' ministry this morning. Paying particular attention to the words, he came to heal the broken heart. I was once reminded of visiting in a nursery home some years ago. And as I was visiting my member and I went into her room, I couldn't help but overhearing some music from next door. As a lady was watching a video and, and she was listening to some singing, and the singing was a familiar song going, oh, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own. I couldn't stand it anymore, so I came out of my visitation and went next door to see what was putting this fire into this room, and lo and behold, there was a middle-aged woman sitting, rocking in a rocking chair. And there 
was a little beautiful sweet boy in her arms, big brown eyes, looking up at me. And I couldn't help but to ask what was wrong and what was wrong with the baby boy. And she looks up at me and tells me that he has a very rare disease which has caused him to have serious problems with his colon. And to complicate the matter, he had serious heart problems. The lady had a lot of faith in the Lord. That's why she was listening to the video. That's why she had the music so loud. Because she was dwelling in the Lord with all that she had and with all that she got. Because this lady was experiencing the suffering of a broken heart. I want you to think with me this morning. Our Lord Jesus Christ left the ivory palace of glory to come to this world with the express purpose in mind to heal broken hearts. He, he was born in a manger wrapped in poor men's rags. And there he, he walked among us and he ministered among us and then was mocked but yet he was whipped and, and he, he hung upon a cross. But there, because of his love for you and for me, was not just enough. He went on and died so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, what a savior. What a savior. What a savior that saved my wicked and sin sick soul. What a savior. That covers each and every sin we ever had. What a savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a savior. What a savior. With this in mind, I want you to consider this morning that we as the church have a ministry that has been handed down to us through our savior. And it is the ministry of helping to heal broken hearts. It is the ministry of pointing people to the only one who can heal a broken heart. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, our Lord Jesus the Christ. He is the only one who can touch in a mighty way and heal our sin sick souls. How, how, how do we mend a broken heart? First, by considering the great need all around us. We don't look around us. We look more in us than around us. We, we, we tend to, to, to look more at ourselves and, and think more of us as ourselves. Rather than we think more about people around us. Well, the Bible says that when Jesus saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. Broken hearts are found in all classes of people. No one is exempt from the possibility of experiencing a broken heart. The word broken hearted in our text literally means to be pressed down upon by calamities. To heal those hearts who are broken down upon by the sense of sinfulness 
and affliction. The next line explains the purpose in healing the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to set free from being bruised means to literally be set free from the pressure of the problem and give them cons cons consolation and consolidation. Yeah. To give them that, that solitude that only God can give. Yeah. That, that inward spirit that fix everything about you. Well, I mentioned one Wednesday that I am thankful that I had a praying grandmother. I watched my grandmother suffer many times with a broken heart. One of her sons, my uncle, was an alcoholic. And one time he broke in my grandmother's house and, and stole her television and sat for just an opportunity to pawn it to get another opportunity to drink. It angered my family. It disturbed our nomenclature but not my grandmother. My grandmother just sat there and cried. And she would pray out and shout out, that's my boy. That's my boy. Don't call the police. Oh, that's my boy. She was willing to give up the television for the love of her son. Because she knew that only Jesus, only Jesus could change him from what he was. Police couldn't fix it. We couldn't fix it. She couldn't fix it. But oh, she knew her Savior. She knew that she believed in a God that sent his only son to fix it for us. Oh, she knew that if his broken heart was ever to be fixed, it had to be fixed by God. And I would hear her crying in that bedroom at night, crying and wailing, and, and I can literally see where her pillow was soaked with tears from crying and sharing and praying for her kids and her sons and her grandkids because she knew a God. She knew a God and she knew that the old song was right. Oh, she would take her burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Take them to the Lord and leave them there. Leave them there. Leave them there. Leave them there. Because so she knew that only God can handle the burdens of our lives. Only the God that we serve can take our burdens and roll them away. Only the God that knows our hearts and knows how much we can bear. Oh, but we are so grateful to have had a Jesus and to still have him in the spirit. We are so grateful to have a God that has a son who continues to nurture and guide us and lead us in ways beyond our own understanding. Oh, secondly, 
commit the problem to Jesus, who expressly sent by God to men broken hearts. Look at the words. He has sent me. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus did not fall in his mission. And he just didn't come into the mission all by himself. He didn't fall into it by happenstance. He was purposely sent to our mission. He was perfectly sent to fix it for us. And if he were purposely sent by God, he can't fail. Jesus would never fail in his mission. His mission is for everlasting to everlasting. Jesus will never fail you when you leave everything up to Jesus. If you just leave it up to him, if you just give it to him in his hand, he has all power. He has all power in the palm of his hand. He would never fail in his mission. All you have to do is give it over to him. Trust in the Lord thy God with all of thy strength and with all of thy might because he would never fail you. He would never fail you. He wants to mend your broken heart this morning. He want to fix it in ways that you would never understand. But God sent Moses with a mission of deliverance to deliver three million people who were captive and brokenhearted. He had no general. He had no armies. He did have a speech impediment. But he would not fail because the spirit of the Lord was upon him. Now, do think for a moment that God's own son would not ever fail you in your greatest needs. He would never fail you because he is the great position. He wrote the book on, heal, on healing and mending broken hearts. How can he fail you? And no doctor in the world can fix a broken heart like Jesus. Jesus can fix it if you give it over to him. Thirdly, Christians have a blessed help in mending broken hearts. D.L. Moody speaks in his book and tells a story about a mother and children who were saved at one of his meetings. And he tells the story how this woman, her husband, wanted to go to France. And they owned this French steamer, this, this fine boat, at least they thought it was. And he felt that if, if he could just get his boat tuned up and prepped up, he can make the journey to France by water. And then he tried it, and he got on the boat with his children and his wife, and they headed to France. But on the way, a fog came over the water. And this little steamer, was out there in the middle of the ocean with many big ships on the ocean. And a big ship came along the way and didn't see this little steamer and ran right into it. 
and crushed it. And the ship started to sink. And they began to, to fight for their lives. The husband lived. And the mother lived. But the children drowned. And, and they came from the rescue. And they got up into the lighthouse. But here, they have a lot to worry about. But the mother didn't worry about the children. And the husband was frantic and wondered why she wasn't worried about the children. And she, she kept on praying and calling on Jesus. And the husband said, shut up. I don't want to hear about Jesus. She said, oh, but you need to hear about my Jesus. Because even though my children are no longer with me, I believe that Jesus scooped down from heaven. heart like Jesus. Look around at your needs. Commit yourself to Jesus. And let me tell you, he will fix it. He will fix it. He will fix it for you and me. Amen.